All right, the drama has subsided at Auburn, at least for right now. Brian Arson remaining Auburn's head coach after an internal investigation conducted by Auburn University finds nothing. And so after more than a week of questions about Brian Arson's future there and Brian Harson kind of going after the university in an ESPN report saying, hey, listen, everybody's attacking my character. I'm not like this. This rocky marriage will continue after only one year. And it's a very uh, interesting situation. And one, you have to wonder if things are going to work out in the long term, let alone the short term. I mean, we could be in the same spot a year from now. And that's a problem. I, I wanted to sit down with you guys and discuss all this because, as many of you know, I, I covered Auburn for seven plus years there. I understand the power structure, even though it's very complicated. I understand the booster circles. I understand all the drama there. And I want to kind of level with you guys, try to peek behind the curtain a little bit as to why this happened at Auburn and why the Auburn name continues to be drag, drug through the mud when it shouldn't be. And so I just want to kind of level with everybody. So st stick with me here, all right? Um, okay, so... You guys saw the allegations about Brian Harson that were in the ESPN report about verb, uh, accusations of verbal abuse of players. And that's what Auburn University was looking at. But the, the big issue there was always, was, was Auburn University going to find more behind the curtain as to why you've had all these assistant coaches leave the, the program and why you've had these players leave the program? Of course, Brian Harson would argue that's the normal type of staff and player roster turnover you have when you have a new coach, right? Well, Auburn University looked into all this because of outcries and rumors and all this other stuff from boosters and power brokers. And so when you start hearing that stuff and the allegations, they start interviewing players, former players, current players, and former staff members to see if there's anything to these rumors. The problem though, in addition to all that, is that you allow this to happen and you do so publicly. President Jay Googe goes in front of the Board of Trustees and says, hey, we're looking into the football program. We'll have, a, we'll have an answer to you here shortly on whether the head coach is going to remain in power. To anybody who just sees that, say, that's not really following Auburn all that closely, you watch the 5 o'clock news or something, you see that pop up, you're like, where the hell did this come from? What is going on at Auburn? And there's not many details other than accusations of something going on within the program. So what is the issue at Auburn? No one trusts each other. The power brokers, the boosters, churn up drama. They're some of the worst gossip mongerers on the planet. They love to just spew things and see if anything sticks. If they don't like somebody, they're going to try and find something on you. And if they can't find something on you, they'll see if they can make something up and see if it sticks. And then it starts opening up other questions and allegations and potential investigations. And then should this guy even be here at Auburn? Should he have this much power? Should he actually have this offensive coordinator? Maybe we should make a change there. I'm going to whisper to this administrator and say, hey, I think we need to fire this guy or that guy. He needs these staff changes. Every day at Auburn, because of the boosters and the lack of a linear power structure within the administration, including the university side, leads to cracks. And in those cracks are the whispers and millions and millions of accusations and all that stuff. Well, not millions, but you understand what I'm saying. All kinds of things and words and bad mouthing going on. In my seven years there, I can't imagine a program having as many leaks and as much gossip and venom within that own program from the power brokers and the boosters than any other in the country. Now, listen, obviously, I haven't covered every team in the country for seven years. No one has. But every day there, when I was on the beat, nearly every day, there was some type of gossip or rumor mongering or something going on where I would have to chase things. Go talk to any Auburn beat writer now. They might not say that because they're there. But when you leave there, you're a little bit more open to talk about it. And I'm telling you, 
every week there was something that I'd have to go chase. And most of the time, there was nothing to it. You are working at all hours. If you are like really just grinding at it, or maybe you're working too hard and you're not working smarter. Like I've learned over the years, I was probably working too hard. I wasn't working smarter. You're chasing something all the time and it rarely leads to anything. I remember, and I'm not going to say what the story was. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I got like a version of some PTSD from it. And I'm not kidding. I had like a nervous breakdown, to be honest with you. I had to go to the doctor's um, stress. I had to take a week and a half off from work and sit in a dark room. Because I was having panic attacks all the time. My stress level, my blood pressure is through the roof. It was crazy. I worked on a story for five months in this really deep dive thing, chasing rumors, right? And then it fell apart. Um, it just fell apart pretty much overnight. And listen, if a story's wrong, it's wrong, and I'm not going to publish it, obviously. If a story's right, I'm going to publish it. But I worked five months on it, and I can't tell you how much pressure I had. I was meeting people over the Georgia state line out in the middle of nowhere because it was so secretive. And I had a nervous breakdown. And that, like, changed my whole mindset on a lot of things in my life. But all, but mostly just, what am I doing chasing all these ghosts that either don't exist or they've been over-exaggerated? Whether it's whether it's positive or negative, if you're a fan, if it's a positive story or negative, both both sides of it, guys. And I'm not going to say this was positive or negative, but it, it it broke me because I spent so much time on this and it just it was ripped away from me. And I, I had nothing, that, no work to show for it. And I had spent time away from my family, from other projects, from work. And it had just mentally drained me anyway. And it was terrible. And some of you who are really close to me, whether you're writers that are still there now or colleagues in the industry, you know what I'm talking about. You know how bad it was that it hurt me. I remember, let's just all get real personal, but I, I want to open up with you guys. The, the, I remember I missed, like I said, a week and a half of work. My boss was very helpful in that. He understood I was undergoing really bad things, my mental health, and then also just physically. It, I just wasn't sleeping and it, it all caught up with me and it, it messed me up. But I missed a, a road game, uh, uh, Auburn uh, at Kentucky, a football game. And I wasn't there. I didn't tell you know anybody I covered that I was going to miss it because I didn't, who, who cares? I'm a reporter. And I, I had coaches asking, me at, uh, asking about me after the game, going, where's Brandon? He's not here or whatever. And I didn't know how to answer it. I had them reach out to me. I just didn't know how to answer it. It put me in a weird situation. So anyway, what I've, I guess what I'm getting to is this. Don't chase things just to chase it. And at Auburn, too often, people think they have something and they don't. Or they're trying to go after someone and they're trying to bring someone down. Or they're trying to prop someone up by saying all these things. And it never either proves to be true or there was just a little truth to it and not too much. I know that sounds vague, but what I'm getting at is this. There are too many people around Auburn, power brokers or not, that just like to stir the pot to see what happens. I think a lot of these people, their entertainment in life is not just playing fantasy football general manager it's playing storybook writer. They want to see a fairy tale come true sometimes. Not to say that's all the time. Again, a lot of this stuff does have merit and they have concerns and so they bring it up. But sometimes it's way too over-exaggerated. And then people like me and other reporters have to go chase it and waste our time on it. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But that, to a certain extent, is what appears to have happened at Auburn over these last few weeks. And it's hurt Auburn's football program as a result. Think what you want of Auburn's administration or Brian Harson, the head coach. But doesn't it seem like that this is a couple that got married without thinking it through? And now a year later, they just promised each other, 
will change. You don't do that a year into a marriage. You don't go, hey, I'm going to change completely who I am as long as you change completely who you are. That just, I mean, not to say it can't work, but man, that just doesn't seem like it could work. And I wrote a column, uh, you know, last week after the Brian Arsa situation was settled about, here's how Auburn and Brian Arsa can move forward and make this successful. And it was pretty much like they both had, they both had to change who they are. And I don't know Brian Arsa on a personal level, but I would, I would think that it would actually be easier for him to change than it would be for dozens and dozens of people at Auburn to change with power and money and influence than it would be for one man as a head coach to change. And that's a, a tall task just for asking a head coach to change the way he's always done things. So where does Auburn go from here? I, I don't know. That, that's a program that should win and can win national championships and SEC championships. I don't know if Brian Harson's the answer. He might very well be. I do give him credit for this. He went in there and challenged the power structure, the money – makers all that stuff he refused to kiss their ring said i'm gonna do it my way you guys need to support me you hired me for a reason i'm the head coach so for everybody that's always saying hey auburn needs a nick saban type or a bill belichick type they got that in brian arson that's how he he works the problem is auburn doesn't like coaches like that they want to be able to toy around with the coach they want to be able to make adjustments they want to tell him who to hire and who to fire how to recruit Brian Arsenal's not going to do that. Is he going to change? Maybe a little bit. He's done a great job in the personnel department. He's been adding positions there. He understands he's got to up, do, have an uptick in recruiting. But with everything else, does that match up with what the boosters and power brokers at Auburn want? Probably not, because they've always been like that. They've been like that for 30-plus years. And drama happens all the time there, and every few years it blows up in public. Jetgate, of course, you guys know that. Several Gus Malzahn situations about whether he's going to be fired, then him getting a contract extension in 2017, then a year later, boosters who weren't happy with that contract extension, trying to get him fired just a year into a seven-year deal. The Kevin Steele coup, failed coup, I should say, just a year ago. I, I just hope for Auburn fans' sake that these boosters don't all of a sudden start taking a big interest in basketball. Basketball's humming right now. And the moment things might go south under Bruce Pearl, I fear the day the boosters and all those people get involved because they'll, they'll, they might tear it down. They could prop it back up. But here's the other thing. Not everything's bad again, again as I say with these boosters. Because they care so much, they don't – swing and miss at every pitch. They, they swing and miss probably two times out of three. And then the third time, they actually, in spite, they, they want what's best for Auburn, and sometimes they actually do what, what's best for Auburn. For example, they finally got that football-only complex being built there. They fired some really good coaches over the years. But then they do that, and then they get tired, Nancy, and they start spreading rumors around, or they, they hear something, or they find something out, and they start spreading these little seeds across the ground and seeing what will bloom. So if you're an Auburn fan, this is my message to you. Do your best not to buy into every single thing and rumor you hear on the planes. And don't spread them, because you're just adding to the problem. Also, be careful what sources you read and consider after reading their article or a column or anything, whether it's a fan site or a professional site, consider this. After you get done reading it, if you read it and your, your ending would just be, I guess we'll just have to find out or time's going to tell us whether this is going to happen, then you need to take that with a pinch of salt, whatever was written. There needs to be a higher standard for what you should consider is just complete rumor, and maybe I shouldn't even be giving this time of day to what should be constituted as a, a, a report. Now, this Brian Harson thing did blow up and should have been reported because there was an actually an investigation going on. That is to be reported. The problem is, is all the rumors that stemmed from that that were just completely unfounded and not true. And saying that, I know a lot of you have seen rumors, but 
reputable news sources didn't report on that. In fact, I didn't see any reputable news site or any uh, public publication print anything like that. It was mostly just people and rival fan bases spreading rumors on Twitter. And then, of course, you know, any curious person, whether you're an Auburn fan or not, is going, what's going on there? Is this really true? And that's the problem with social media uh, anyway. But just you got to have a stronger mind. Consider the source for everything. And again, take that, take that advice I have. After you read something, if it's if you're at the end of it, you're going, well, I guess we'll just have to find out, then then it's you shouldn't be considering that. And sometimes, you know, listen, source you got as a reporter, more behind the scenes stuff, you build sources through relationships and trust. And that trust is built through, you know, several storylines where you kind of add up like almost like a kind of like a checklist you're like adding it up going okay 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 that thing they told me was true that thing they told me was true that thing was told me that it was true and you quickly realize they're all they actually are an insider and the information they're giving you is true but some people that you talk to as sources and you still talk to them but you don't report on it they get things wrong more so than not and even then if they say something, you of course got to go double check it and triple check it with some other sources or other actual officials at Auburn. I think we're in dangerous territory right now because too often, like I did, like any reporters, we'd hear something from these sources and we go chase it. Now, of course, I wouldn't report it unless it was true, but it's still wasting my time. So a lot like you, an Auburn fan or fan, any fan could probably relate to this. You hear all these rumors on social media or whatever, and you start worrying about them. You start looking into them. But then there's no validation. Uh, there's no validity to it, I should say. And you just waste your time and you waste your energy. So my advice to you, again, is to consider the source and don't let it take up too much of your time. Because when you do that, the whole thing starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger and extrapolating and extrapolating. and becomes a bigger issue than it really is. And then Auburn looks bad for it, or for that matter, any football program or basketball program looks bad for it, no matter what fan base you're a part of. So consider the source you're hearing this stuff from. Consider the motive. There's always motives behind every source. Everybody's got a motive. Like, you know, uh, why does he want two ice cream sandwiches? You know what I mean? It's like, is he hungry or is he just wanting to take the two available ice cream sandwiches because he doesn't want anybody else to have one? You know what I mean? I know it's a bad analogy, but I'm bad at stuff like that. But I wanted to give you some personal experience from this because I covered Auburn for seven years and it can be very tiring behind the scenes. And part of that is by design. Uh, the power brokers and the others, they like it like that because sometimes they get, the, they get what they want. Um, whether it's through misinformation or a actual noble viewpoint of I want what's best for Auburn and I'm not saying all these sources are bad or all these people are bad that you might consider bad today but sometimes they miss more than they hit and then you have to question their motives and I've I've seen it up close and I've never reported I, I've actually looked through things this past week I was looking I've never reported like really bad information out there or anything that was might lead to something and, and you know what I mean but man, we're getting dangerously close because of social media where anything someone says among these sources um, can spread like wildfire in an instant. And then all of a sudden, something that's invalid has validity. So be careful what you read. Be careful who you listen to. And that's not just at Auburn. That's anywhere. Auburn can recover from all this. I mean, They'll win a championship again at some point. I just don't know when, but they're, they're going to win a championship again. They're going to beat Alabama again. They're going to beat Georgia again. It's going to happen again. Auburn's not past the point of no return, um, but this is an inflection point for the program as far as where it goes from here, just in the Brian Harson era. So good luck to everybody at Auburn. I want what's best for Auburn. I want what's best for everybody, to be quite honest, um, because I got friends there. But I just want to give you a little peek behind the curtain about just how crazy it can be there. And I know some of that's vague, but I can't cite specific things because then it'd be like, I'm putting more 
information out there that people will extrapolate. You know what I mean? I don't want to say like, this is the story I was working on. And then people are going, oh my gosh, that would have been a big thing for us or, you know, all that. Um, yeah. So I'm a little bit everywhere on this, but I kind of want to level with everybody. Um, just because people are in positions of power and they have money and everything doesn't mean they should just be spouting off all the time. And as reporters or even people who are important on social media and everything, they shouldn't just take what they say and just spread it out there as well for the masses to, uh, to digest. Having said that, you know, when things get serious enough and there's an actual investigation on the university side, yes, that needs to be reported on. But sometimes things just take on legs of their own, life of their own. And we all got to be careful about how we go about approaching that. So anyway, love you guys. Love everybody. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Um, I'll see you down the road.